In this video, we're going to introduce how to use Excel to conduct regression analysis, and then how to use the results from the regression analysis for predictions. Here's the data. So we have movie titles. We have 150 movies. And for each movie, we know their pre-sale ticket sales in dollar values. And the tomato meter rating, this is the rating from Rotten Tomatoes. It reflects the percentage of critics who rated the movie fresh. For example, 90 here indicates that 90% of the critics rated the movie 10 Cloverfield Lane as fresh. And then we have the budget in million dollars and the number of theaters that the movie was released in, the runtime of the movies, how long it is in minutes, the MPAA rating of the movie. This is the Motion Picture Association of America, so MPAA rating. It's PG, PG-13, or R. And uh, finally, we have the box office on the opening day. So for this regression, we want to use box office on opening day as the Y variable. So this is also called the dependent variable. And then we want to use these variables here as the independent variable so that we can establish how the variation of these variables is associated with the variation of box office. And then after we created the regression, we want to use the regression results to figure out for a new movie title if we know the x variables, can we actually predict the opening day box office revenue? So now let's get started with the regression. In order to perform the regression, first we have to look at whether the variables are suited for data analysis. All these variables, they are in numerical terms. We can use them for regression analysis right away. However, this variable, in column G, the MPA rating, it is a categorical variable PG, PG-13, or R. If we use this directly in a regression, Excel is not going to be able to recognize it. So it's not able to use such categorical variable directly. We have to code this variable first before you can run the regression. So here we have three categories, PG, PG-13, and R. For three categories, we will need two indicator variables to cover all the three categories. So you can actually generalize this. Whatever number of categories you have for a categorical variable, you need one fewer variable to code that. So if you have 10 categories, you will need nine variables to code that. So we're going to need two new variables. So I'm going to select two columns and right click and then insert. Now I have two new columns. I'm going to call the first column MPAA underscore PG. Enter. And then I'm going to call the second new column MPAA underscore PG 13. So now I have these two new columns for the new variables I'm about to create. To create these new indicator variables, I'm going to use if. So equals if parenthesis. And so if the MPA rating here is equal to quote PG quote comma. If that's the case, I'm going to give this a value of one comma. Otherwise, if not, I'm going to give this a value of zero and then close the parenthesis and enter. And similarly, I'm going to create the indicator variable for PG-13 equals if parenthesis i2 equals quote PG-13 quote comma. If that's the case, I'm going to give it one, otherwise comma zero close the parenthesis and enter. As you can see here, the MPA rating for this movie is PG-13. So the PG-13 variable takes a value of 1, but the PG variable takes a value of 0. We can copy this all the way down. And as you can see, 
Whenever a movie is rated PG-13, the PG-13 indicator variable would be 1. The PG indicator variable would be 0. And when the movie is rated PG, it's the other way around. When the movie is rated R, both indicator variables are going to be zeros. We only really need two variables to distinguish three different categories. Now we have coded this variable, we can go on to run the regression that we want to run. So to run a regression, you should go to data, and you're going to see data analysis here on the right. If you don't see data analysis, you should follow the video link provided separately to enable the analysis tool pack add-in in Excel. So click on data analysis. And there are many choices. What we're going to do here is to choose regression here and then click OK. So now we are at the interface for regression. It asks you to input the Y range. In our case, Y is the box office. And then X range and X's are all of these columns from B to H. And there are some other options. You can choose labels. By choosing labels, it's going to take the first row of the selection area as the variable name. So we're going to use labels. And then for the Y range, we are going to have these things in column J. So select J1. And then use Control shift down It will select everything in that column from J1 to J151. And then go to X range. We're going to select the first row here from column B to column H. And then we can use Control shift down to select all the Xs. And by default, Excel is going to create a new sheet to store the results from the regression. So we don't need to change anything else. Just click OK. Now we have the regression result. As you can see, the regression result has three areas. This, this, and this. So the first area has the R squared. This is one thing that we usually will take a look at after we finish the regression. R squared is a value that is, by definition, going to be between 0 and 1. And we are at 0.782. This is actually a pretty good result, which means 78% of the variances have been captured by our regression. Okay, now we can move on. And the second area of this result is a ANOVA table. And my suggestion is, given our coverage, to skip this table. Don't worry about it. But instead, look directly at the third table with the coefficients and their p-values. Let's highlight these two columns, because these are the two things that we really want to be careful about. And then we are going to interpret these results. Let me reduce the number of decimal points. And also here. OK, so for regression results, first the coefficients here. Each number in the coefficient column corresponds to the beta that we have discussed in the lecture video. That those are the betas multiplied into the variables. So for example, for this regression result, what we have really is the opening box office is equal to minus 372359. This is the intercept plus 9.74 times pre-sale and then plus 65,393.5 times the tomato meter and then plus etc. the other variables. These coefficients give us the regression that we look at. 
whether these coefficients are reliable enough for us to make interpretations or depend on the p-values. Again, we're going to look at the p-values that is below 0.05. In this set of results, we have three p-values that are below 0.05, which means there's a very slim chance that these coefficients are actually not different from zero. In other words, these coefficients are significantly different from zero. That's the statistics lingo. But point being that then we can interpret these coefficients mainly because they are reliable enough to be different from zero to interpret. So these are the coefficients we can use for interpretation. For example, the coefficient 9.74 here indicates that Whenever pre-sale increases by $1 million, the opening box office will increase by $9.74 million. So when this pre-sale goes up by 1, because it's multiplied by 9.74, the opening box office would increase by $9.74 million. And similarly, we can interpret the tomato meter coefficient. All right, so beyond interpreting the coefficients themselves, we can actually use these coefficients to make a prediction of the opening box office when we have a new movie. So let me copy these coefficients back into the data sheet. So I have select the coefficients, control C, I've copied them, and then go back to box office, and then I'll roll up to see the new movie parameters that we already have. So for this new movie, I already know the pre-sales number, I know the tomato meter number, the budget, etc. I just don't know the coefficients yet. And then I'm going to paste the coefficients down here by right-click, select Paste Special. I'm going to paste the values and transpose. So that column of coefficients would be transposed into a row that's easier to use. And then click OK. So now we have the regression coefficients here. And then, because we have the betas, the x's, the betas, the x's, we can multiply each one of the coefficients into the x variables, multiply them together, and then sum them up. So that would give me a prediction of the opening box office of this new movie project. So I'm going to do equals if you remember, we have learned a formula that is very convenient to do this. It's called sum product. So we're going to select the coefficients here, comma, and they're going to be multiplied into the axis of the new movie here. Now we have select them, and sum product is going to multiply each element into each other and then sum them up. Now we have all the axes. What we are missing is the intercept, so plus the intercept here. So that would give us a prediction of the opening box office for this new movie project. Enter. And as we can see here, the prediction is this new movie will have an opening box office of $24 million. That's how we use regression results for prediction. And before we go away, we should rename sheet 2. So when we come back later, we'll know what's here. So let's call this regression results. And that's how we run, and that's how we run a regression in Excel and use the regression results for predictions. That concludes this video.